Hello, this is Hound4004, Minecraft 1.16 The Nether Update has released today, and I'm going to be going over everything that has been in the 1.16 Nether Update, because this video is going to be so long, because these snapshots and everything leading up to this have been so big this video will be in sections with their timestamps in the description below so the sections are the intro the warped forest soul sand valley crimson forest basalt delta nether wastes netherite mobs and then random blocks, items, and changes, structures, and their items, and then we'll end off with some good old brand new advancements. And then we finish it off 100% with the outro. So like I said, everything in that will be in the description below if you want to find a certain timestamp. I'm sorry for how long this video will be, but let me tell you, it was a big update and there's a lot to go over. So let's get into it now. So here we are in the first main section, the Warped Forest. This is one of the four brand new biomes in the nether. So before we go into all the new features we're seeing, let's just take a look around at the environment and kind of like see some new blocks. So now that we've taken a little look around the biome, let's go over the blocks individually. So here we have some of the things that make up the trees. So this is warped wart block. It looks like this and it is kind of the leaves of the trees, but they're actually not trees, they are fungus. So the proper tool to mine this block up is a hoe. These trees actually have a light source, and it is called Shroom Light. They look like this, and their tool is also a hoe to mine them up. It's like a redstone lamp, but it doesn't require any redstone, and it is a renewable light block. Then, of course, their stems are the warped stem. You can cut them with an axe, and you can create warped high fee out of them which is their four-sided block variant crafted like you would normal wood also you can strip these versions with an axe which gets you stripped warp stem or stripped warp high fee now with this comes a bunch of new variants of kind of the wood planks but technically they're fungus so we got stairs, slab, button, fence gate, gate, pressure plate, trap door, door, and the good old warped sign. Please note that all these new planks and wood variants are unburnable. So if you set them on fire, they will not burn down. So then in this biome, we have twisting vines growing up everywhere. They look like this, and they can grow, they grow bottom up. You can climb these, they are climbable. As you can see, I just climbed a vine. But that's not all the vegetation. We have warped roots the warp fungus which when you bone meal them on their proper block they will grow that warped fungus tree we got nether sprouts crimson roots commonly spawn in this forest although there is a crimson forest that we'll get into later and there's crimson fungus that spawn in this which we'll get into later then 
we have warped fungus on a stick. This will come into play later when we go on to random blocks, items, and things like that. But to craft this, you take a fishing rod and a warp fungus, bada bing, bada boom, warp fungus on a stick. Then, of course, the main block we've been looking at all of this is warped nicelium. You take bone meal, and then if you have a block with warped nicelium next to it, that's just your plain old netherrack, you bone meal it, it will turn into warped nicelium. When you bone meal warp nicelium, you can get some of the brand new nether plants. There's another block called the black stone. It spawns kind of beneath everything, and it's just a block you can run into while mining besides, well, gravel and netherrack. But we will get into that in the basalt delta category. Also, please note, that if you want to collect warped nicelium, you will need a silk touch pickaxe. Also, in this biome, endermen spawn quite frequently because there is no new mob in this biome. But yes, this is also another brand new home for the endermen. So here we are in the one of the th Four new biomes, the Soul Sand Valley, and let's have a look at round at the atmosphere before we get into all the new features. In this you probably remember our good old soul sand, right? It's been great, it's been slow, it's been painful, but now it has a different variant that's not as slow to walk on. This is called soil soil. It's what you've been looking at, it's the floor. Yep, soul soil. These two new blocks, well, this one new block and that one old block, has a functionality. If you try to put some flint and steel on it, you will get this brand new blue fire. It deals more damage than your regular fire, and you can only get it when you place it on soul sand or soul soil blocks. Now you probably saw these nice big old pillars from the nether top to the nether bottom. It's kind of almost like a support for the nether. And this is called basalt. Basalt, you can find it easily in this biome, but there's also a way to get it. So you grab yourself some blue ice, and you grab yourself some lava, you put some soul soil in between it, almost like a basalt gener or a cobblestone generator. You break this glass, and you get infinite basalt. This is just mined with any pickaxe of your choosing. This comes in a different variety as well. You can't find this naturally, but you can craft it. It's polished basalt. Mining with a pickaxe, you get four for four. So these are uh, four regular basalt, and you get yourself some polished basalt. These are also directional place blocks, and here's what they look like. Now time for a soul torch. So there's a new mob we'll get into later, and this will have a functionality later, and we will get into this functionality with that mob in random blocks and items category. This also comes in a lantern variant, which just works like a regular lantern, and it's craft like this. Then it comes in its soul campfire variant, crafted like this. And you, it's like a normal campfire. You can place food on it and it'll cook it right up for you. If you step in this though, it will deal more damage than a regular campfire. When mining down in this biome, you can find soul sand, gravel, and blackstone. Blackstone we will get into in the basalt deltas category. For mobs, 
it appears that gas spawn quite frequently in this biome, so consider this the home of gas and regular skeletons. Also, the music that you've been hearing in the background of this section is a brand new music by Lena Rain. It's called So Below. If you want to listen to it yourself, the music link is in the description. There's even a download link for it in the description of that one music video that I'm in the description. So there's a description in the description of the description. Here we are in another brand new biome in the nether. This is the Crimson Forest. Before we get into all the new blocks and items, let's take a look around at this new atmosphere and kind of get a feel for the biome before we actually dive into what's actually all new going on here. So, in this biome, there was quite a few new blocks, if you couldn't tell. In the trees, there was a brand new block called Shroom White. It's mined with any type of hoe, and it looks like this. It's a brand new light source block, and it's natural. Also, in the trees, and growing from the nether ceiling, there's weeping vines. It looks like this. And it is climbable. It grows naturally and you can harvest it very easily. It's nice to have some more vegetation in the nether. Then in the treetops we had the nether warp block. It's mined with a hoe and it looks like this. We also have the crimson stem. These things are fungus, not wood. You can mine it with an axe and, like, wood, they are directional place blocks. And you can see a pulsing in the vine. Also, there is crimson hyphae. When you take the four crimson stems and slap it in a crafting table like this. So this is like a four-sided block. Then you can... Make it into a stripped crimson hyphae or stripped crimson stem. So you can take an axe and strip it like if it was normal wood. These comes in all the wood variants. Crimson planks, which you can make crimson stairs, slabs, buttons, gates, fences, doors, trap doors, signs, and pressure points. Please note that all these new planks and wood variants are unburnable. So if you set them on fire, they will not burn down. Then of course, the main block you've been looking at is Crimson Nycelium. It's a version of the nether rack. You take bone meal, and when you place it right next to a block that has the Nycelium on it, you can go ahead and bone meal it, even under a torch, and you will get the new block. Then you go ahead and bone meal the Nycelium, and you get some of the brand new blocks. The Crimson Fungus is one of those blocks you can get. It looks like this, and it's you bone meal this, you'll get one of those mighty, mighty crimson fungus. Then you get crimson roots in this biome, and you get warped fungus once in a while as well. I kind of talked about this in the warped forest section. There is a few brand new mobs in this biome. We have the zombified piglin. We have the hoglin. And we have the piglin. 
I will go over these more in detail in the mobs category. If you want to skip to that right now, the timestamp is in the description. So welcome to the Basalt Deltas section. This is our next new biome in the nether update that we're going to be looking at. As we did before, we're going to take a fly around and look at this biome before we actually get into what's new. So that is our brand new biome, but with this biome, there's actually nothing unique to it. So that's why I've saved the new block, Blackstone, that I've been talking about in every section for this section. Now before we get into the Blackstone, as you can see there's that new basalt and, well, the Blackstone all around. And also, to note, magma cubes spawn quite frequently. It's a probably a bit harder of a biome to navigate around with these basalt pillars just reaching up a bit of a ways to make a nice block on the map. A nice place for magma cubes to jump all over. On to the black stone. So black stone is almost like cobblestone and stone all combined, and it's basically another variant, which means we get all of the variants. So, of course the normal slab, stair, and wall. Then you can polish it, and you get polished blackstone, slab, stairs, walls. Then you can chisel the polished blackstone, and then you get polished blackstone, stone bricks, slabs, stairs, and walls. And then if you go ahead and throw it in a furnace, you can get a polished blackstone bricks that are chiseled. Also, it comes in a button and a pressure plate for you redstones out there. But that is it for the basalt deltas and the black stone. So on to the nether wastes. Welcome to the nether wastes section. So this is another technically new biome. And you're thinking, this is what the old nether looks like, and yes, you are correct. This is the nether wastes. The old nether that you've already explored or been to will be renamed called the nether wastes. And also, the nether wastes can be found. There's only some subtle changes, like this new ore right here, which I'll get into in random blocks, items, and changes. Also, this has been in all the biomes, so there's actually nothing unique to this biome, and it's probably one of the worst biomes, but it is a biome at that. Also, there is brand new music when you're walking around in this biome. It is called Rebetto, and it's by Lena Rain. If you want to listen to it, the link to it is in the description below. So, let's go on to some new stuff with some netherite. So welcome to the netherite category. If I told you there was a new ore in the game, and it was better than diamonds, would you believe me? Probably not, but this nether update does just that. There is a brand new ore that is only exclusive to the nether. Let's get into it. Down deep below, under the lava oceans, down below where you'd never go. There is a new block called Ancient Debris. You can only mine it with a diamond pickaxe and it is super, super rare. It looks like this and while well, this itself, it may be a cool block, you know, you could probably build a weird little structure or something with it. It has much more of a use. You go ahead and throw it in a furnace and you get this also another new item, the netherite scrap. This netherite scrap is combined with gold in a crafting grid like this or just 
four and four, and you will craft yourself up a netherite ingot. Now all this has pretty much been useless, but now it's been leading up to this point, this netherite ingot. So you go ahead, and uh, we'll we'll show you how to craft some of these new things. So of course they come in all of the variants of armor and weapons, which is very very nice. Nice gray, but it's not stone. It's quite good, actually. Now, how you get this is, well, this block, the smithing table, we got it in Village and Pillage update. The Minecraft devs said there's not a use for it, but it will come in the next major update, and that's just what happened. So you take your diamond sword, your diamond armor, anything, anything diamond, and you grab yourself another right ingot, you put it in the smithing table, you put your diamond tool right here, and you go ahead and grab your netherite ingot and put it here, and that is how you upgrade your diamond to netherite. And as you can see, there's much more of a difference, and it even gives you some knockback resistance. And it looks nice, cool. As you can see, the helmet is not like your typical helmet, and it actually comes down like a maybe a World War helmet or in some sort of major battle instead of just battling undead mobs, but it is very, very nice, and it's much better. It does not burn in lava as well. So let's say, oh dear, I dropped my netherite ingot, or my netherite armor, into the lava, which I am doing now. As you can see, it goes away, but as you can see, it floats to the top of the lava, and you can go ahead and try to come down here with the new mob strider, which we'll get into and go ahead and grab yourself that nice old netherite. Work perk. Now, of course, netherite is great, but what if you could have a block of netherite? With all these uh, twisted and turned netherite ingots, if you slap this in a crafting grid like this, you can get yourself a block of netherite, which honestly has no purpose, and it's just a big flex. But, I mean, if you really want to look fancy, it does power a beacon, and you can use it to also power a beacon. But to be honest, just use some iron. It does just as good as this expensive netherite. Just make yourself an iron farm. I mean, unless you really want to be a show-off. Welcome to the mobs category. At this point, it's no secret. In the 1.14 Village and Pillage update, we got new mobs. In the Buzzy Bees update, we got a new mob. Every time there's an update, there's going to be a new mob. So that's just what the Nether update did. It gave us a few new mobs to play around with as well. So let's go and see what's new for the new mobs. So, starting off, we got this cute little strider. Now, this strider is the passive mob in the nether update. It spawns on lava floors. You can probably see them all around, many of them. But they spawn on the lava floors. Now, they have to be touching lava, or else they will turn cold and start shivering. They look like this. Now this strider is more help than you think. You gr find yourself a strider and you maybe try to lead it forward with warped fungus from the warped force section. Then you go ahead and craft yourself a warped fungus on a stick. If you want to know how to do that, go to the warped force section as well. But then you grab yourself a saddle, you mount the saddle on the strider, you right click the strider and then hold warped fungus on a stick. As you can see, he's much like a pig, but on lava. So this is a great easy way of transportation. Also, you are able to breed these guys, so you grab some warp fungus and give it to two of them, you'll get a baby strider. For our next mob, it is the zombified piglin, formerly known as the zombie pigman. It is also a passive mob until you anger it. There's nothing unique about this guy except for his brand new texture. He can be found in the nether wastes, and he can be found in 
the Crimson Forest. Our next mob is this cute little hoglin. He is an aggressive mob, but you can breed them and he is a food source. To breed them, all you need is some crimson fungus and then you are good to go. Hoglins love crimson fungus, but when there's a warp fungus, he will decide to run away from that. So they are a food source, and when you kill them, they drop pork chops, and that is all. It is not a unique item, but at least it's some sort of food source in the nether. When you take these guys into the overworld, no matter how you get them there, just get them to the overworld, they will start shaking, and they will turn into a zombified hoglin. <laughs> So this hoglin is unlike any other mob. It will find anything and attack anything in sight. Like you just saw, the baby zoglin attacked the hoglin before the hoglin zombified. So they will attack everything in sight, which actually might be a good thing for farms. So here is the piglin. He is another mob, and he is mostly passive as long as you're wearing golden armor. Golden armor is, uh, well, golden armor, which now has a use. So to make the piglin not be mad, just wear some armor and he'll be glad. Now you can barter with this piglin and all will get into that in random blocks items category. If you take this guy and somehow he gets into the overworld, much like the hoglin, he will start shaking and he will turn into a zombified piglin. This guy can spawn in the nether wastes and the crimson forest. The piglin also is scared of anything soul fire. So you have a soul campfire, just soul fire, soul fire torch, soul fire lantern. If I take this guy and take him out, he is actually deciding to pathfind a way from the soul fire. Also, piglins occasionally decide to hunt hoglins. It's not really they hate each other, it's more of a survival thing. And once in a while, they will win, and once in a while, they will decide to do a victory dance. Welcome to random blocks and items and changes. So this is going to be probably the longest category, but it's gonna be worth it. There is a bunch of new just kind of random things that are great in this nether update. We're going to start off with piglin trades. So as we just talked about mobs, piglins also are able to trade with you. Now, we'll go into some of the things they trade. One of the things they trade is a brand new enchantment. It's Soul Speed, and there's three levels of it, so one, two, and three. You can apply these to any boots, or sometimes they might even give you Soul Speed with boots. When you're in the brand new biome, the Soul Sand Valley, you know that it's maybe kind of hard to walk through all that Soul Sand, but when you apply this enchantment to a boot, and wear the boots. Running across soul sand has never been faster. It might be even one of the fastest travels. Also, it leaves this kind of particle behind. I don't know if you're seeing that, but once in a while you might see an occasional ghost. Another thing that 
that they might trade with you that's brand new is Crying Obsidian. Now, Crying Obsidian is a pretty cool block. It has an occasional particle of purple dripping down, almost as if it was crying. But this Crying Obsidian does just more. Although the piglins don't trade this, you can craft this with Crying Obsidian. And it is the respawn anchor. You take six crying obsidian and three glowstone and you got yourself a respawn anchor. You go ahead and grab yourself some more glowstone, but we'll get into why in a minute. So it looks like this kind of a block voidy thing. And you see this for this little circle almost here. I'm going to click this with glowstone once, and it charges it up. Now, now that you've charged this, you if you die, you will respawn here, or wherever you left your respawn anchor. This has a total of four charges, and that is how it works. If you die, you can easily recharge it. And also, this does give a redstone signal out of a comparator for you redstone people. Now, that's kind of some of the stuff piglin trades and what you can craft with piglin trades. But they can also give you various items like magma cream, potion of fire resistance. They're almost worth going to. And they're the only place where you can get crying obsidian and soul speed. Moving on, here we have the lodestone. As I talked about netherite earlier on in my netherite category, this is another use for it. So you go ahead and take eight chiseled stone bricks and put yourself a netherite and get in the middle of your crafting table, you will get the lodestone. It looks like this. You grab yourself a compass, and when you click the lodestone, you can fly or walk or go anywhere you want to in the nether and this compass will always point towards that lodestone now if you try to go into a different dimension like from the nether and you try to go into the overworld the compass will kind of go crazy like this one is here you can set this in any dimension you want but you cannot cross the dimension if you break the lodestone, the compass will also kind of go crazy. Now this compass is also a brand new item, and it's called the lodestone compass. But it is not in the creative inventory, it's only if you click a compass on the lodestone. Now you've probably seen this gold or in the background, or, or in various different places. It's a new ore, and it's nether exclusive, and it's nether gold ore. It's mineable with any pickaxe, and you get gold nuggets. But you put some fortune on that, and wooey, you're gonna have a lot of gold. It's probably good gold to trade with the piglins as well. Now our next block, we've known about this at Minecon if you watch that, but it is the target block. You craft it with one hay bale and four redstone, and you got a target block. You can hit this target block with any projectile. These are any projectile, 100%. Even a snow golem can hit it. When you hit it in the middle, that gives out a redstone signal of 15. And then the redstone signal gets weaker and weaker as you get further from the middle when hitting it. That is due to the fact that you can hit it with any projectile anywhere. Up next, we have a very subtle change, but a good change at that. This is a wall. These walls. This, this is all walls. This is not a joke. This is walls. Walls now finally stack to each other instead of being all ugly and nasty. So walls are a lot more usable. There is a new quartz brick. It looks like this. And you craft it with four quartz. There is now a crack nether brick. You throw regular nether brick in a furnace, and you'll get some of that good crack stuff. 
then there is chiseled nether brick. Now this block really makes me hope that there will be an update to the nether fortress in the future. But it is a nice chiseled nether brick. There's some changes to villagers. The farmer villager, when they fill up on seeds, they can now compost those seeds to make bone meal. They can take the bone meal and use it to grow their crops faster. Also, if a villager is struck by lightning and turns into a witch, if you go out of despawn chunks for that witch, the witch will not despawn. Also, when you go into a zombie village, the zombies would despawn for the village, so they now stay there. There are two new world types, floating islands and caves. This is the floating island world types. It's based like how you might find an end dimension, but it's all overworld and there's stone and stuff. Your regular structures spawn all around, and it's a nice kind of almost like a sky block, although there's many blocks in the sky. These two new world types are under more world options, and it is the old buffet world, but now they're their own thing. So the caves type world is like the nether, except there's water instead of lava, and stone and everything is all grassy. When creating a new world, there's this brand new game rules section, which you can manage all the game rules, like if you want raids on or off, or different types of mobs. So instead of creating the world and having to change this, it's all right here when you create a world. Also, Mojang has a brand new logo, and it's a brand new loading screen for whenever you just play Minecraft. Also, there is a new background. There is a new game mode switcher by holding F3 plus F4 and then holding F3 and then just pressing F4 to change which mode you want to be in. This is nice and easy for if you just want to quickly change game modes and don't want to type slash game mode. And finally, some redstone changes. Now you know that redstone usually looks like this. So what's up with this T? Well, redstone now has a default. When you first place redstone, you will get the T shape, but you can toggle this just by clicking it, and it will not be a T anymore. So when it's in the T shape, it can power all blocks around, but when it's in a dot shape, it's obviously not sending any power to any blocks around. So you can probably guess how that f changes many redstone contraptions. Welcome to the structures category. So in this category, we will be going over the new structures. So we're going to start with this structure that's behind me. This is the structure called the Ruin Portal. In the nether, it comes with all sorts of black stone and some new blocks, which I'll get into. If you want to learn about the black stone in particular, or this weird kind of obsidian looking thing, then either go to Basalt Deltas where I talk about black stone, or go to Random Blocks Items and Changes for this new obsidian block. So it looks like this in the nether, but you can also find these in the overworld as well. So here's an example of one that might spawn in the overworld. Now sometimes they even spawn with lava around. Now as you saw, 
Some of them spawn smaller and some of them spawn larger. It really depends on where it might generate and stuff like that. Now, you can find these brand new ruin portals in the ocean under lava, in the caves, just randomly under a tree. They could literally spawn anywhere. They could spawn deep down in a jungle. These ruined portals also have some loot chests which have different loot like maybe some golden swords or some fire charges or flint and steel or obsidian to even help you finish the portal. And before you ask, no you don't have to go to one of these to go into the nether. You can craft a nether portal wherever you want like normal. Overall though, that is pretty much it for the ruined portals. Now we'll get into this new block in a, a minute. But first we have another structure to look at. The next one is Bastion Remnants, which is the big ruined structure behind me. They spawn in four different types, but one thing they all have in common is there's piglins. So you can find random loot chests around, but be careful, when getting these, you could get killed by the piglins, because they do not want you stealing their stuff. If you they hear you open a chest, they will come after you. If you want to even know a bit more about these piglins, go ahead and go over to the mobs section. Now these things spawn with many different types of loots even down to good old spectral arrows. They can also spawn with regular arrows, obsidian, a bunch of weird stuff. And they even can spawn in with enchanted diamond armor. For some brand new things that were in the Bastion Remnants, and even the Ruin Portal, we have Gilded Black Stone. This is kind of like gravel in that if you break it, it has a chance to drop some gold nuggets. Although it doesn't fall like gravel, it's just that it has a chance of dropping the thing you want. These are exclusive, however, to the P Bastion Remnants. Now you probably saw this brand new chain block. It's very, very nice. And it really works well with both of the types of lanterns. If you want to know what this lantern is, well then go to the Soul Sand Valley category. You can craft these chains quite easily with two iron nuggets in one piece of regular iron. One of the brand new things that you can find in the Bastion Remnants chest is Pig Step. It is a music disc, and it, and this song has actually been playing in the background music of this category. The link is in the description if you want to listen to it by itself. But it is a music disc, you can find it and put it in a jukebox. So this is a piglin banner pattern. You can get it while trading or bartering with a piglin. It can also be found in the Bastion loot chests. You can apply it to a loom and it just looks like this, which has the same texture as chiseled polished blackstone, which was also all around. But that pretty much does it for the structures and their brand new blocks and items. Time to go on to some advancements. The first advancement is for when you finally get your hands on some ancient debris. And as you can see in the top right corner, you can see the brand new advancement. Also, another brand new advancement, when you give yourself full netherite armor, you get the challenge of cover me in debris. Another advancement, when you put a compass on the lodestone, you get an advancement laid, country load, take me home. Another one is when you get some crying obsidian, 
you get the advancement who is cutting onions also you get a new recipe which which is great another advancement for when you max out the respawn anchor not quite nine lives an advancement for our good old strider friends you put a saddle on them ride them with a warp fungus on a stick this boat has legs Another new advancement for when you go into a bastion remnants. You get those were the days. Also, when in a bastion and you open a chest, you get war pigs when you try to loot the poor piglins. Another advancement is when you distract an angry piglin with some gold. Yes, piglins, take the gold. You are not angry at me. And it is called Oh Shiny. But why are the piglins still running after me? Just just take the gold piglins. Don't hurt me. Another advancement for when you go to every single biome in the nether, you get hot tourist destinations. Also, breeding striders and hoglins now go into the advancement, the parrots and the bats. There is an advancement for when you get a netherite hoe. It's called Serious Dedication. There is an advancement for when you hit a target block from 32 blocks away. But I suck at shooting bows, so unfortunately I'm not able to show it. Also, in advancements, there is of course the new look for all the new advancements in the nether. And of course, the bullseye advancement is in a separate adventure advancement. Overall though, that was everything in the nether update. I hope to see you again in another one of my videos or even in the next Minecraft update. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you enjoyed this. But for now, this is Hound4004 saying goodbye.